Have you ever played Project Zomboid and wondered what the game would be like without zombies? I'm here to answer that question by killing every single one of them. The objective of this challenge is pretty straightforward. My goal is to eliminate every single zombie on the map without dying once. Since the map is, well, big. This is going to be a monumental task. You might be thinking why I've decided to do this. Well, frankly, I never really valued my sanity that much. First up, the rules. Number one, if I die, it's game over. I'll have to either give up or try again on a new save. Number two, controlled fires are out of the question. They're too effective at clearing large hordes of zombies and are, to be honest, extremely boring. To beat this challenge, I will be turning off zombie respawns, zombie migration, changing the transmission to saliva only, and installing this handy minimap mod, which lets me see every zombie within my trunk. I also found this zombie heat map online, which will be helpful as well. Full sandbox settings and mod list are in the description. Alright, it's time to make our war machine. His name? The Pee Pee Poo Poo Man. I am not kidding, I named him like this. Whatever. It's time to get that bread. Before we begin, let me quickly go over my character's trait build. First we'll cover the negative traits. You might have realized that my character is entirely covered in bandages. This is due to the burn ward patient trait, which makes me useless in hand-to-hand -hand combat for around the first week. However, it gives me a whopping 18 points to work with. Next I decided to go with deprived, with the hopes of spawning the Rosal police department. And since I'm killing literally everything, I decided to pick conspicuous. It's time to move on to the positive traits. To counter my early game combat disadvantage, I decided to pick lead food. Stomping is going to be my only viable combat tactic for the time being. I invested my leftover points into hardy, evasive, gym goer, and other bread and butter traits. For the occupation, I decided to go with lumberjack, for the unique axeman trait. This build is absolutely overpowered, and you'll see why later. Onto the video. By sheer luck, I spawned in the Rosewood police department, and almost immediately, an alarm went off. Well that's just fucking great. I geared up and faced my first zombies. Just you two? Okay. Oh, no, nope, there's a lot more than two. With the help of this door, all I had to do was tip them over and stomp their heads in. Oh, there's more. After killing the last one, I carefully made my way outside through the back and very slowly made my way to the fire department. This is where I would build my HQ. Inside, there were a lot of useful weapons and even a sledgehammer. Oh. Oh, yes, sir. I'm sure I wouldn't forget about this item's existence later on. I got myself situated, killed the zombies that were around the building, blocked off the stairs, and went to bed. Next morning, I set out on a supply run to the neighborhood. I looted a cruiser, found a key for this working car, which was a godsend this early on. Hey, we got a car. A chainsaw, huh? and a boomstick. Give me this. After looting a bit more, I returned home and brought all the spoils upstairs. The next few days were spent watching TV shows for skill points, exercising, finding out that I can overdose on pills thanks to a mod. Wait, what the fuck? Overdose? I should probably stop taking those painkillers then. Watching more shows, exercising even more, and then watching even more shows. And then on day 7, the helicopter arrived. Oh shit, that's not good. Uh, what do I do? I was not in fighting shape yet. However, I did block the way upstairs beforehand, and set up some escape ropes in case of an emergency. The next day, my wounds finally healed. Hell yeah, I'm healed! And as I was chilling in my base, another alarm went off. You have got to be kidding me, right? This time, right next to the fire department. Oh my god. It's right there. Which alerted hundreds of zombies to my location. I couldn't fight this. Not yet. I had to quickly pack all of my things and leave. As I was about to finish, they made their way inside. Oh shit. I opened the garage and swiftly got in my car. Go away! However, in the hurry, I left the most important thing upstairs. Wh what? Where the hell are my keys? Turns out, I had left my car keys on the floor upstairs. Way to go, Slavic. Get out, get out. Oh my god. Shit! Get up, get up right fucking now. 
Oh, that's not good. Fuck it. Oh! How the fuck am I alive? After dodging the hordes of zombies and circling around the building, I used the emergency rope to climb back upstairs. There's the keys. Grab him. Then I swiftly returned to the car. Get in, get in, get in, get in. And got the fuck out of there. Go, go, go. I hastily went east, towards an isolated house in the forest. Alright, I don't know how, but I made it. Christ. After clearing the area, and calming down, I recollected my thoughts. I almost fumbled the bag. That was so stressful. I got myself situated, and the next day, I made my way towards the school. What the fuck? To look for useful skill books. Yes! After raiding the library, I decided to test out a BB gun that I found in some random kid's locker. This thing is surprisingly powerful. There we go, aiming to... Alright, it's time for the big horn. Come at me! I am finding a horde with a BB gun. This shouldn't be possible. Rita's gun mode back is absolutely stupid. Yeah, as silly as this weapon is, I'm not gonna use it. It's way too powerful for what it is. Anyways, I was still missing a few skill books, so I looted the bookstore the next day. I was also on the lookout for a semi truck. But while I was exploring the parking lots, I got distracted by a pretty sizable horde. After continuing my search, I managed to find this instead. What the fuck? Wait, 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 what the? What is this? They aren't supposed to spawn here? Yes. This is in fact a UH-60 Black Hawk helicopter equipped with 5.56 machine guns in a motel parking lot. This came as a massive surprise and finding one this early was very convenient since it's gonna have a very important role a lot later into our journey. But for now I put it in the back of my mind and continued my search for a truck. Truck. On my way back home, I passed by the police department, grabbed the things I left previously, and looted the armory. Inside I found no shotguns, no shotgun shells, and no bitches. Which was quite a bummer, because shotguns are the easiest way to level up aiming in Project Zomboid. Regardless, I took some of the guns, brought them back home, and leveled up electrical to level 1. There we go, brother. On day 11, I cleared my area of zombies. Once I was done, I spent the rest of the day reading. The following day, I focused on grinding mechanics. I needed one level in electrical and two in mechanics, so I could start hotwiring vehicles. I already had the required electrical skill, but I was still missing one level in mechanics. My plan for day 13 was to slowly start clearing Rosewood of zombies. While doing this, I leveled up my axe combat skill to level 5. And thanks to the dynamic traits mod, received a trait that would further accelerate my progress. Moving further into town and clearing houses one by one, Yep, this one's empty as well. I managed to find a safe house. These generate randomly across the entire map and hold many useful items, primarily firearms. Yes! Yes! Where are the shotguns? I was starting to get frustrated. Sure, I still had the boomstick, but that can barely be even classified as a gun. It's shit in every single way possible, including damage. I'm not using it. Bottom of the barrel. Fuck you. Die. Anyways, I've been lying to you. I did find a shotgun, however I was reluctant to use it, because it's not even supposed to exist, but it seemed like I didn't have a choice. Armed with the shotgun and a CZ-75 pistol, it was finally time to climb back up the food chain and take the fight to them.
By the end of day 18, I had most of South Rosewood completely clear, and started making my way west towards the prison. In the midst of all this, I found an upgrade to my arsenal, the 870 Marine. It's a pretty average shotgun and doesn't excel at anything, but it's certainly better than what I had before. On day 16, I grinded carpentry a bit, and caught my first code on day 17, the first of many. You see, the Dynamic Traits mod messes with the Moodles, and makes your character more prone to colds. This feature was unbeknownst to me back then, and would cause me a lot of pain and suffering during my run. There we go. On day 18, I cleared and entered the main armory of the prison. Once again, I ended up with no shotguns and barely any shells. Shotguns just don't exist. But I didn't let this distract me, and got straight back to work. On day 21, after almost overdosing on beta blockers, I retreated early, and spent the rest of the day exercising in the police department bathroom. Why the bathroom of all places? Uh, day 22. I was gonna continue clearing out the prison, however, there was a sudden change of plans. God fucking damn! Well, change of plans, guess we're grinding uh, mechanics now. Come at me, bitches. There we go. With the car now back on its wheels, I could finally get back on track and continue clearing the prison. This time, I came up with a big brain idea. I would use a nearby police car siren and lure the zombies out from the inside. But I almost fumbled the bag instead. Again. Oh! I'm fine, I'm fine, I'm fine, I'm fine, I'm fine, I'm fine. Luckily, I sustained no injuries and continued fighting. By the end of the day, the front of the prison was pretty much clear. The leftover evening was spent transferring the entire prison armory to my car before I finally headed back home. Oh, no. <laughs> Yo, that was sick! That was so sick! The next day, I finished clearing out the interior. Oh my god, there's a lot of them in there. And inner perimeter of the prison. On day 26, I got started on the outer perimeter of the prison. And by using a police car sirens, I lured zombies out of the woods. But they managed to break the sirens. Yeah. I decided to use my car's horn instead. The hordes around the prison were massive. But thanks to my firepower, I had no problems clearing them out. And by the evening of day 27, I had the entire prison and outer perimeter clear of zombies. There were still zombies in the forest, but I would deal with them another time. After catching another cold, I went back home and slept it off. 
Next morning, I walked around the base for a bit and had a look at my stats. In 27 days, I had managed to kill 3,774 zombies. I was making good progress, but I still had a very, very, very long road ahead of me. So I immediately got back to work. I cleared the eastern part of Rosewood, shot up a church. Lord, forgive me for what I'm about to do. And raided the local Gigamart before moving on to the northern part of town the next day. Since the weather wasn't up to my standards, I decided to return home for the night, because I realized that the colds make me sick. At first I thought it was because of corpse sickness, but I was always wearing a gas mask at all times, so that couldn't have been the case. The reason why I was concerned about this is because there's four stages to the sickness stat. Queasy, nausea, sick and fever. Or as I like to call it, death. I think you get the point. Unfortunately, I would not find out about the true cause of this until way later down the line. But for now, I spent the next two days indoors. Reading and reading and reading. Gaining knowledge that would help me with my progression and long-term survival. Midway through day 31, it finally stopped raining. So it was time to continue the slaughter. I steadily expanded my influence north. While clearing the northern gas station, I almost got overwhelmed. But I got things back under control and had it cleared by the end of the day. Before moving onto the eastbound highway, I decided to grind tailoring a bit. And after reaching level 2, I got back to it and made swift work of the highway. By nightfall I got about halfway there, before I had to return back to Rosewood. The next day, I found another fucking helicopter. Uh, there's another one over here. Reached level 9 in the axe skill. One more. And then looked for fuel to siphon. You see, by this point the power grid had collapsed. Which meant the gas stations were no longer powered. Sure, there were plenty of cars with fuel, but that fuel would eventually run out. I had already located multiple generators, however, since I hadn't been able to find the required magazine, my character lacked the knowledge to operate them. For now, I shoved that problem under the rug, and focused on the western part of Rosewood. And after 33 days and 5,000 kills, I drove around Rosewood. The streets were completely desolate. Not a single zombie in sight. Slowly but surely, progress was being made. The next couple of days were spent clearing out the countryside below Rosewood. And tediously grinding the tailoring skill. Trust me, I'm not being weird. I need these items for skills levels. Please, trust me. I'm not that kind of a guy. After slaughtering the local farmers for almost 3 days straight, I patrolled around Rosewood. I am a very good driver. Keeping an eye out for any stragglers that I might have missed, while also scouring the neighborhood for the generator skill magazine. In the evening I returned to the helicopters. Wasn't there a second one here? Oh, there it is! Oh! Fueled one of them up and took it out for a spin. Start it up. Yup, there we go. Oh yeah, and lift off. Holy shit, this is amazing. Dude, this is so fucking cool. This is so incredible. This is honestly incredible. <laughs> this is literally the best mod ever. <laughs> this is the first time I'm flying this thing. Well, time to go harass other survivors, I guess. I am in love with this mod. Alright, let's set you down like right here. Oh, oh shit. Um, it's floating. This helicopter will become a crucial part of this journey. Why you may ask? Well, you'll find out about it eventually. While I was having fun with the helicopter, 
my dumbass vastly underestimated how loud it was, and I scattered zombies oh around god. the areas I had already cleared. Oh my god! What the fuck? So I set out to fix my mistakes. During all of this, I finally got my axe skill up to level 10. Now there are only the passive and nimble skills left to grind. Only then will I become truly unstoppable. Oh shit. So the next day, I did exactly that. There we go. My character was another step closer towards becoming a Chad. After getting absolutely ripped, I shifted my focus towards mechanics for the rest of the day. At this point, I had a lot of guns to my name, but my arsenal still lacked attachments and ammunition, primarily shotgun shells. So I set off north in my helicopter with the goal of looting this military surplus store. I was sure to find everything I needed there. However, because I did not learn from my mistakes, I once again vastly underestimated the loudness of the helicopter, and unsurprisingly, got overwhelmed. After getting things relatively under control, this happened. Great. That's just fucking lovely, isn't it? Oh, guess I'm fighting. Oh my god. After trying to regain ground once again, I realized that it was completely pointless. So I instead opted for a <clears throat> tactical retreat. The mission was a failure. Defeated, I turned towards grinding mechanics for the rest of the day, continuing into day 41 and 42 as well. Next on the list was carpentry. I got my character to level 6. Nice! Got a new trait! I ended the day off by clearing out the scattered groups around my house. Stop pumping my windows. The next day I woke up to a raging storm. God, the storm outside. I had no choice but to stay indoors. Organizing, grinding, exercising. Way into the night. And because of this, I woke up late the next day. To pass the time, I tried out another firearm. The Ash 50. Overall, a pretty solid rifle. I just didn't have a lot of ammo for it. The following day, I once again patrolled around Rosewood. While at the same time, role-playing as an American cop. Suspect spotted. Initiating pursuit. Get on the ground! Stop resisting! I said stop resisting! Suspect has been apprehended. Returning to station. A bit later after this, I turned towards the south once more, with the means of reaching aiming level 6. Doing this took me almost two entire days, just to grind a measly 500 experience. Nevertheless, it was worth it in the end. And around midday, I developed another trait. Oh. Hmm. <laughs> oh, the voices, they're getting to kill. me now. Murder, slaughter, kill, slaughter, kill, murder, kill, crazy. kill, death, kill, kill, death, kill, death, kill, death, kill, kill, death, kill, 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 After working around my base a bit, I shifted my focus towards my next goal. Acquiring a semi-truck, along with a big trailer. I decided to check out a truck I saw at a truck stop. It has a really nice pattern as well. However, before I moved on to the next phase of this challenge, I decided that for now, my number one priority should be to clear out the southern countryside. So I got back to business. Towards the end of day 50, I developed another code. Ah, fuck. I was a bit of a dum dum back then, and never really experienced codes in the time I've played this game. So I still believed that they caused me to be sick due to the mods I had installed. Because of this, I didn't really know how to deal with colds, and usually just resorted to eating massive amounts of food. Oh, how foolish. I was. Why am I getting nauseous? Oh! Oh my god! Jesus Christ! D what the fuck is causing this? 
I could not for the life of me understand what was causing me to be sick. And after the code had disappeared, instead of researching how codes worked, I just moved on with my day like an idiot. However, I knew that I should start taking the weather very seriously from this point onward. I don't want to get wet. I don't want to have another the cold and risk dying again. So I stayed indoors until the weather had improved. Since I was pretty much done with the area in and around Rosewood, I got ready to head west towards a very special location. I got geared up, came up with the greatest idea ever. Wait, I should carry around bread everywhere I go as a lucky charm. And secured myself the most spacious trailer I could find. Okay, so this is actually the biggest one. After making sure I was bringing the essential items with me, I finally embarked west the next morning. There it is, in all its glory, Fort Redstone. The perfect place to expand my insignificant arsenal. However, upon my arrival, I was met with a roadblock. Quite literally. The only way I could get through this gate was by busting it down with a sledgehammer. An item that I forgot to bring, but had back at base. So I left the trailer in front of the gate and returned with the truck. Once I got home, I realized that I in fact did not have one back at base. Even though I had a vague memory of finding one. I assumed that happened on a different save file and decided that I would have the best chances of finding one in the Modra Industrial Zone. So I secured myself a police SUV and made my way east the next morning while clearing the road along the way. With all these warehouses, I would surely find a sledgehammer in no time, right? Actually, there's actually no sledgehammer here. I I've just had a thought. What if I never brought this? What if I never brought the sledgehammer to my new base and just left it at the fire department? <laughs> I'll check out the rest of this area and then I'll go back home and check the fire department. After checking the final warehouse, I made my way back to Rosewood and towards the fire department. I swear to god, if this thing has been here this entire time and I didn't know about it, I will actually flip my shit. I, I will be the most- the stupidest person on this planet. You have got to be fucking kidding me. It was here this entire time- After finding out that I literally have the flattest brain in the world, I made my way back to that godforsaken gate. With the sledgehammer in my hands, I could finally tear down the gate and enter. But before I did that, I had a good look at my stats. In just under two months, I managed to kill just over 8,000 zombies. When I first started this challenge, I honestly thought it would be impossible. But looking back at it now, it might just be doable. I managed to make good progress so far. However, I cannot physically fit this entire journey into a single video. So make sure to subscribe and stay tuned for part two.